My name is Phil Vischer. I'm the founder of Big Idea Productions and the creator of Veggie Tales, the kids' uh, video series. When I was a kid, I started animating when I was about eight. Uh, when, by the time I was 14, I knew I was going to make films, and I thought, okay, this is what I'm going to do for God and for the kingdom. I'm going to make movies. Once I got into that, my vision for that kind of expanded, and I thought, well, why would I just want to make films? Why not be the next Walt Disney? Why not, you know, and then I started reading business books that told me, well, you need a big, hairy, audacious goal. It's not enough to just make films. You need to set out a 20-year goal that's breathtaking in scope that will inspire your workers. Um, I ended up building the largest animation studio in between the coasts. Had 210 people working uh, for me when I was about 30 and that was doing 40 million in sales in uh, DVDs, the most successful kids directed video project actually, I think ever. And then um, it all fell apart. Completely turned upside down, burst into flames, sank into bankruptcy. I was convinced all along that this is when God is gonna show up because my dream is so important to him. And because my dream is good for him, it's good for God. You know, I'm helping kids. I am, I am offsetting the evil coming out of Hollywood. That's good for God. It's good for kids. It's good for everyone. So God will show up and, and save this. And he didn't. He stood back and let it fall apart. And then he showed me how miserable I had become. I was carrying this burden of, of single-handedly believing I could change the world. And it's a very American thing. Most Americans believe they can change the world. Okay, I, I'm gonna save the world. There's only one person who's ever walked the earth who could actually save the world, and his name wasn't Phil. I had been miserable. You know, the bigger it got, the less I felt really equipped to, to know what I was doing. But also I realized as a Christian, I had made the work I was doing for God more important than my relationship with him. And this is where it gets tricky in business because we're told to plan. You know, we're told to make big plans and, and, and cast large visions. And, and we, we bring that into our spiritual lives sometimes and we confuse it with vision and dreams in the Bible, which is a completely different thing. In, in the Bible, a dream is a vision that you have while you're asleep. In the culture, a dream is a goal an ambition, a desire. And when we confuse them, for me, I said, okay, my dream is to become the Christian Disney. And then I decided, and this is the dream God has given me. And then you start using biblical language around it. And then it becomes something you can't let go of. You know, and many people will drive themselves insane pursuing what they're holding on to as a dream. So what I have done for my, my new business is called Jellyfish Labs. And the reason it's called Jellyfish Labs is because jellyfish can't locomote. They can't choose their own course. Jellyfish can't do long-range planning because they have no ability to move laterally, <laughs> which makes it very hard to get anywhere. Uh, jellyfish has to stay in the current and trust that the current will carry it where it needs to be. And I realize as a Christian, I'm not the big studly barracuda that I thought I was that can do whatever I want and you know, watch me, God, just stand back and bless me. We kind of want God to bless us and then get out of our way. Open doors and then get out of our way. I'm much more closer to a spineless, brainless bag of goo. You know, a, a jellyfish is like, if you see a jellyfish on the beach, it's nothing. It is, it's just a, it's a, a sad sandwich bag. You put it in the water and it's beautiful. And as a Christian, if I am suspended in the, the current of God's will, I am a thing of beauty and his current, his will will carry me where he wants me to be. I discovered when I focused on outcomes and unfortunately our culture teaches us to focus on outcomes. Where do you want to be in five years? How do you want to see the world different because of your work? Okay, that's focus on outcomes. Focus on outcomes leads to stress. If you can let go of outcomes, turn them over to God and focus on obedience. Say, God, what have you asked me to do today and am I doing it? you lose the stress, you know, and it's a whole different way. Life becomes about loving others, not about accomplishing objectives. And that's where you find the fruit of the Spirit. That's where you find your joy. <laughs> you want more? Awesome. That's great. <laughs>
Perfect. Uh, which led to me. <laughs> hey. Hey. You guys can cut that out. <laughs> By 14, I knew I was going to make movies one day. This is rough. This, is, this isn't going very well. Okay. When I was sharecropping, when I was a tiny gerbil. Okay, what were we talking about? Uh, you can do all sorts of damage to yourself and to those around you, and you can end up really stressed. And probably dead in the ditch. Or in prison. <laughs> <laughs>